the Lord has put things in the earth to teach us about him. Water. Water takes different forms. Water can be a liquid, it can be a solid in the form of ice, and it can be gas. Three separate distinct forms, yet all water. And he says, I'm using this to teach you about me. I'm the father of creation. I'm the son of redemption. And I'm the Holy Ghost in keeping you in the earth. But I'm God. Not three separate gods. Not God the Father. God the... I'm just water. I'm God. I'm the spirit. I move. Anything with more than one head is a freak, including God. James chapter 2 verse 19 James chapter 2 verse 19 you believe there is one God you do well <laughs> the devils believe also and they tremble you can't believe there's one God and not do something about it even the devil does something about it all sought after and I am honored that he accepted our invitation to be here tonight amen and so could we welcome him with a warm hand praise evangelist Mark Dross. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Give God praise in the house. Come on now. Give God praise in the house. I don't hear you. If that's praise, I don't know what that is because I don't hear you. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Elicio. Amen. I've known him and his wife for a good while now. And uh, we love and appreciate them and uh, what they're doing. Praise the Lord. Man, I can't see you guys. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Amen. I know it's a youth thing, but just give me a little light in the house. Amen. That way I can see folks. Just a little light in the house. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I see you. Amen. It is a joy to be here. I honor Pastor Lopez and uh, the Union City Church and uh, honor them for this conference. Brother Elisio and his team, God bless you. Amen. Um, what an honor to see uh, Pastor Ben Aguirre. Uh, about nine years ago, we preached a youth camp together in Chicago, Illinois. My God have mercy, it was too long. Amen. The camp was too long. <laughs> Amen. But it was a joy to be able to make friendship with Pastor Ben. And it's good to be here today. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I didn't come to waste time. Glory to God. All the, all the ministers that are here, God bless you. All the pastors that are here, hallelujah, God bless you. It's good to see Jonathan Shivers, amen, amen. Powerful young man. Uh, one of the most uh, purest young men I, I have ever met in my life. And I'm, I'm thankful for him, amen, and his family. Man, that brother Alet, God have mercy. Alet Fria, Santo Dios, amen. That dude can tear it up. Amen, he can tear it up. I'm so thankful to uh, see uh, young men rising up like that in the music and everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 37 and reading verse 1 and verse 2. And then we will jump to Zechariah uh, chapter 4 and verse 6. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord says, in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1, the hand of the Lord was on me, 
And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. God grabs him and sets him in the middle of death. In the middle of something that had no life. Zechariah chapter 4 and reading verse 6 and there's a name in here that I might not even pronounce right but I'll say it in Spanish Hallelujah Santo Dios de la Gloria Amen Usame Papa Hallelujah Then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, hallelujah, hey, amen, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I want to preach to you. And uh, I, I know that some folks are like time conscience and everything. I'm an evangelist. Amen. I'm just, it, if the Lord wants me for two hours, I'll go two hours. Amen. I just, you know. Amen. In fact, if you sit there like a bump on the log, I will go two hours. Just to take all your fun time away. Hallelujah. I want to preach on the subject the god dimension the god dimension let us pray heavenly father we thank you because you are awesome you are powerful you are mighty and there is no god like you i pray lord by the power of your spirit that you will move once again in this place father shake our spirit shake our spirit Lord bring somebody out of a carnal spirit and into the spirit of the Lord put the devil in his place and let your name be glorified in this house in Jesus name Amen. Now clap your hands to the Lord and give God the praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. As we began reading the first verse, it started by saying the hand of the Lord was upon me. This means that he was led and guided and empowered. There is nothing like knowing that God's hand is upon your life. Because when you know that God's hand is upon your life, you can go through hell and high water. But no, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. He says, he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord. When it speaks about the spirit, it's not talking about that feeling of God touching you or even God moving inside of you. It's not talking about the goosebumps that you feel in that moment that you're in church or, or, or you feel the chills all over and your hair stands up. When it's talking about the spirit, when it says, and, and he brought me in, uh, in the spirit of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord. When he's, when he's saying the spirit, it's speaking of the realm, amen, of the environment of God. 
and of the dimension that God operates in. Glory to God. Not just any realm or any dimension. It is the God dimension. John said in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. When John got in the spirit, in the God dimension, that's when he began to see the glory of God. He began to see things that he could not capture with the human eye. He saw seven candlesticks and in the midst of them, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment uh, that went all the way down to his feet. His head and his hair were like white wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. He began to see things that he never had perceived or seen before. John was in the God dimension. He saw the throne. He saw the angels and, and the altar of God. And things were being revealed to his human eyes. To see what John saw. We have to be where John was and where he was able to capture it. And that is John was in the spirit. Glory to God. John was in the spirit. And that's where we belong. We belong in the spirit. It's not just a time that we get into the spirit. No, we belong in the spirit. Not just when we come to church, baby. We got to live in the spirit. Glory to God. One woo and... Two amens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have, to, we have to live in the spirit. We should be in the dimension of God. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about someday when we die and we go to heaven. I'm talking about living in the dimension of the glory of God now. Glory to God. Now, not, not when I get older, not when I get gray hair, not, no, no, now I have to live in the God dimension. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Now, now I want you to understand, uh, uh, don't get confused. I'm not saying that we should always be walking, seeing angels. Because there's some folks that kind of, they're like spookified people. They're spooky all the time. I was around one guy and, and I was talking and all of a sudden he goes. And I was like, Santo Dios de la Gloria. And I turned too. He's like, do you see it? I said, amen. I wasn't seeing nothing. Hallelujah. He's like, there's that demon crawling all over the... I was like, my God have mercy. I was almost like, uh, uh, Santa Maria. No, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Uh, some folks like to spookify it. And, and they even, they, they try to do that to be able to demonstrate uh, almost, almost a prideful Spirit of I am or I know more than what you do. Glory to God. Some folks operate in that spirit. It, it's all about the dimension that they're in. It's all about what they're doing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Baby, it's not even about you. It's about the spirit of God. You better clap better than that. Hallelujah. Because I'm preaching better than that clap. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is that to experience the realm of the spirit, the God dimension, we must be full 
of the Spirit of God and walking in the Spirit. You cannot be carnal and expect to operate in the dimension of God. Glory to God. You can't be carnal. I got to say it again. You can't be carnal. About two said amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it until everybody says amen. You can't be carnal. Glory to God. Some folks, all they want to do is just water it down and, and, and act like a sip. Uh, you, you know what? Just be spiritual when you get in church. No, baby. Because the world does not take a break. Hallelujah. The devil don't take a break. Uh, and if I walk out of this place and I become carnal in my spirit, the devil's going to take everything uh, that God had tried to establish in my life. I cannot waste time uh, to be carnal. Glory to God. The Bible makes that clear. He, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit. And, and, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Baby, if you're lusting, you're not in the spirit. Glory to God. If you're lusting, you're not in the spirit. Galatians 5.25 If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. But, but what, what amazes me, it says, if. When there's an if, it's because it's like, I, I wish you would. And if, if you walk in the Spirit, if you, if you live in the Spirit, then also walk in the Spirit. Don't just be spiritual when you go to church. Be spiritual when you're walking all over the place. Hallelujah. Have your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, and so it's, a, it's an invitation to live in the spirit. There are too many young people that are not living in the spirit of the Lord. In the God dimension. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the dimension uh, of God, the God dimension uh, must become more important for us uh, than the fleshly realm. Than everything that is carnal, this must be more important to us. Glory to God. It must be more important uh, because, because healing and deliverance and miracles, signs and wonders, all happen in the God dimension. They don't happen in the carnal dimension. They happen in the God dimension, which is the kingdom of God. Jesus revealed to us that the power to destroy the works of the devil was a direct result of the kingdom of God being present. So therefore, if the kingdom of God is present, demons have to flee. Chains are broken. Addictions are released out of our lives. Because when the kingdom and the power of God are present, everything changes. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. The kingdom is the system of heaven. But the spirit of God is what gives power to the kingdom. There's a lot of people that they're worried more about getting the system down. But they don't have the power. They want to get the system down. And I've seen too many people worried about the system. But powerless. Man, that's good all by itself. That's a tweet and a half. Hallelujah. Praise God. We may have the system of the kingdom down to an art. 
We can talk about the kingdom. We can sing about the kingdom, preach about the kingdom, teach about the kingdom. But it's not enough. It's not enough just talking about it. It's not enough about just singing about it. It is not enough to just have the system of the kingdom. Because system will not heal the sick. System will not deliver the bound out of oppression. System will not set the captives free. Hallelujah. Kingdom system is important. But we need the power of the king. So that the kingdom system can bring change. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. We could talk everything about healing and understand everything about healing and live a life of sickness. We can know all the truth of salvation and end up in hell. Baby, just because you grow up in church doesn't mean you got a free pass. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you, can, you can float around and believe that God's got greasy grace and, and, and you can do whatever because uh, Santo Dios de la Gloria, my grandpa is so and so and my daddy is so and so. Yeah, well, who are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Who are you, baby? You don't get it by right. You get it by a brokenness in the presence of God. Oh, I'm going to come right down your alley, baby. Hallelujah. I feel apostolic authority on my life right now. There are chains that are about to be broken and loosened in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to give a shout unto God. (laughs) Clap your hands to the Lord. (sighs) Knowledge. It's not enough. Tell your neighbor, say you look smart, but it's not enough. See, you got to understand that the kingdom of God is both system, knowledge, and, and power. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only it didn't just come in a concept it didn't just come in a knowledge but also in power it didn't just come as a a, a content of letters but it also came in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance Jude warns the church in Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compared to, compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith. He's saying, you got to fight for the faith. You got to fight for this. Don't, don't, ah, God have mercy. Don't put your, put your hands down and, and let the devil take your faith away and let the devil take the gospel away. No, 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 no. You got to fight for the faith. He said you got to fight for the faith that once, uh, w- uh, that once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Now watch this. It says for certain individuals, whose condemnation was written about uh, long ago have secretly slipped in amongst you. They are ungodly people who perverse the grace of God unto a license of immorality. He says you got to watch out, you got to be vigilant because there are people amongst you That want to make this a carnal thing and not a spiritual thing. He said, he said they they, they are evil. They are perverse. They are perversing the grace to immorality. 
glory to God, perversing it, saying, baby, you don't, you don't have to dress that way. It, it, it's not like that anymore. The devil is a liar. Saying you don't have to pray like Pastor Ben said. Because God, God hears your, your little thank you Jesus for my food prayer. The devil is a liar. Coming and telling you that you can, you can fornicate before you get married. The devil is a liar. Telling you it's okay if you watch pornography because on Sunday you can repent. The devil is a liar. There'll be people amongst you that will perverse the grace of God. Act like as if the grace is just there to grab it whenever you want. Uh, hallelujah. I come to speak a different word in this house. Uh, in the name of Jesus. It's not a greasy grace. Uh, it's a grace that reaches. Uh, but baby, if you keep on playing with it, one day you will run out of grace. Uh, because the God that loves you right now one day will be the God that judges you. Somebody give God, give God praise in the house. Can I preach this tonight? I said, can I preach this tonight? I feel the authority of the Lord in this place. Just trying, people trying to water it down. He says that there will be times when the body of Christ would slip into a state of complacency. That it would begin to settle into a powerless Powerless faith. Oh, Jesus. A faith without substance. I know that there are some folks in this place right now, some young people, thinking, man, Brother Dross is preaching like he's preaching to adults. Maybe you should grow up. Hallelujah. The religious world has cheapened faith by making it be about things and not about our relationship with God. Oh God, I believe in you. Give me my mustache. And all of a sudden, people just view God as Santa Claus. And you go into your gimme, 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 gimme. And God, if you don't give it, because because all, all my homies, they got it, and I don't got it. And you start sucking on your thumb and crying and throwing a tantrum. And then when God don't give it to you, you start believing the devil's voice that God don't love you. And that's why you didn't get it. Baby, that's a cheap faith. A true faith is this, God, I'm serving you. Whether you never bless me in my life again, I'm still serving you. Oh, I wish I had some young people in this place. I, I wish I had some Christians. Karabataria <laughs> The devil wants to cheapen your faith because faith is powerful. Because if you got faith and the devil takes your house away and takes your dog away and takes your car away and takes everything away and you're sick but you got faith, baby, you're coming up. It don't matter what the devil throws at you. If you got faith, you got victory in the name of Jesus. Are there any young people in this house that got faith? Somebody give a shout unto God. 
I don't hear you give a shout. Give a shout. Uh, everything in the Bible belongs to us by inheritance. But you will never know. You will never know. Oh, God. You will never know what it is and how it works if all you do is only talk about it but not operate in it. Whew. Man, I, every once in a while I go with my boy and uh, we go to this thing called Cars and Coffee. They have it early on a Saturday morning, early. And, and my boy, he likes, the, he likes the new Ford GT. Amen. It's a beautiful machine. Amen. Bless me, God. <laughs> give, 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 give. Santo Dios de la Gloria. <laughs> and, so, and so every time we show up, there's only, I, I think there's only like one or two people that have it in Dallas. So every time we show up, my son says, I hope the new GT is there. And it's funny because Lamborghinis come by and Ferraris come by and, and all these kind of stuff. And my son is just looking for the GT. And when that puppy pulls up, he starts getting excited because that motor begins to roar. Hallelujah. You can never know the power of a car until you put the key in and you turn the car on. That's when all of a sudden you begin to feel the vibration of the power that's in that engine. And there are too many young people walking around with the keys but have not experienced the power. Walking around with the knowledge of it but not in the power of it. Walking around talking about it but not in the demonstration of it. In Jesus name Something's going to change In this place tonight About three of you that believe it I said something's going to change I declare there's going to be a breakthrough In Jesus name Somebody give God the praise God has wielded his power to the church. The gifts of the Spirit, the miracle signs and wonders, healings and deliverance, visions and dreams, the supernatural, the visitation, the manifestation, all the activities of the power of God is in us. And God operates through it. The majority of the churches never operate in it because they are satisfied just to, just to know about it. I walked into one church and, uh, and, and there was like two people dancing and, uh, and the preacher got up and he said to the to the church he said if y'all are visiting us it was a white church if y'all are visiting us today he said we're, we're please excuse us for our craziness i'm like what 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 craziness please excuse us for our craziness we're Pentecostal. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Sister Susie hasn't danced yet. Hallelujah. We ain't Pentecostal yet. <laughs> Brother George over there is falling asleep. We ain't Pentecostal. <laughs> Glory to God. 
to be apostolic, to be Pentecostal, you're going to have the spirit moving in the church. You're going to have the presence of God moving in the church. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in this place? Somebody give God praise in the house. The kingdom is not just words, but also power. Wherever the kingdom of God is truly present, there is a manifestation of God's power. Because the kingdom always produces what it speaks about. The kingdom does not lie. When the kingdom, when the word, the knowledge says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. But you don't feel nothing. Check if you're there for God or you're there on your own agenda. Glory to God. Glory to God. Why? Why? Because the kingdom does not lie. It will produce what it promises it will produce. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It will produce what it has promised to produce. But if it doesn't, it's not God's problem. It's our carnality that's getting in the way. My Lord, this is good all by itself. I'm enjoying this. Amen. Santo Dios. I'm about to pick up another offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Just kind of like take a little five-minute break, pick up an offering, and then go. Amen. Round two. Hallelujah. If you, if you would know what's stirring in my spirit. This whole, this whole week, knowing that I was coming to this deal tonight, I, this whole week I've been saying, God, ah, you got to stir those young people. You got to stir those young people up, God. You got to stir something in their spirit because I'm tired of seeing charismatic dead Pentecostals. Charismatic dead apostolics looking more and more like the world acting like as if they got something when their soul is empty and cold you can go ahead and sit i preached on the radio nobody said amen well i was preaching on the radio i could preach uh, with nobody saying amen but i got a word from the lord tonight uh, that's going to stir up your spirit uh, you either get in this baby or get out uh, there's no halfway point, uh, not in this day and age, uh, because the devil is a liar. He does want to steal your soul and bring you into a lukewarm condition. Uh, but the Lord says, I wish you were either hot uh, or you were cold, but don't be lukewarm. In other words, don't just be a church goer, but be a church doer. Who am I preaching to in this place? Uh, Somebody ought to give a shout unto God. And the prophet, the prophet said, oh Jesus. He says, he set me down in the midst of a valley full of bones. Now you see how God feels about his kingdom God is so confident about his kingdom and about his power that he will set you in the midst of the most dead situation because it's going to be through you that he's going to infuse life to that which is dead you might be the only apostolic in your school. It doesn't mean you got to shut up, baby. 
It means that God has so much confidence in what's in you to infuse life to your school. Oh Lord, something's about to pop in this place. Uh, somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Uh, come on now, clap your hands to the Lord. The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom is greater than any sickness, greater than any disease, greater than any bondage, than any depression or oppression that is around you. It don't matter how bad it is around you. In you is what can change your atmosphere. When God places you in the middle of that, it's to bring life. Huh. Bring life in the name of Jesus. Uh, there are some young people here. You need life in your house. You're one shout away from seeing your mama be saved, your daddy be saved. You're one shout away of, uh, of being able to see your cousin saved. and everything. Because God placed you in the midst of all that crazy. I know that's not for everybody here because some of you grew up under the pews. Hallelujah. Amen. Echando mocos under the pews and all that kind of stuff. And hallelujah. You just you think you know the word. You don't even you can't even quote the thing. Amen. And, and, and all that. I'm talking about those that you've been in the battle and you've seen the devil stealing your family and, and, and trying to get your cousins and, and moving and doing all this kind of stuff. And you you're coming to church and you're trying to live for God but all your friends are crazy I'm declaring in the name of Jesus revival is about to hit them in Jesus name somebody give a shout unto God behold the kingdom of God is in you tell your neighbor say the kingdom is within me if you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, then, then don't leave this place without the kingdom being in you. Hallelujah. God's power in you is way more powerful than any dead situation that you are dealing with right now. Any dead situation. Girl, kick that dead boyfriend out. Cut that boy off in the name of Jesus. He's draining your spirit. Uh, buddy, cut that girl off in the name of Jesus. She's draining your spirit. Uh, she's distracting you from getting into the spirit. Uh, the devil is a liar. You got to fight for the kingdom. You got to fight for the anointing. I, I wish I had some fighters in this place. The prophet said in verse 7, he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and, and the bones came together, bones to his bone. And behold, there was uh, there was, uh, uh, they were covered with skin and all that stuff and, and, and uh, sinews, amen, and flesh and, and it came upon them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Good things happened, but there was no breath in them. In, in fact, things came together, but they were still breathless. Singing in the choir, but breathless. Giving your tithes and offering, but breathless. Wearing your nice suit, but breathless. Whew. Holy God. Breathless. No breath in them. 
system did its job. It organized. It brought it together. But there was no power. And when you just look like an apostolic, but you don't got the power that goes with it. Let me just put it this way. Pretty bones don't scare the devil. Pretty bones don't scare the devil. That don't make the devil flee. Young people just coming together to play basketball don't scare the devil. Hallelujah. You know I'm right. Hallelujah. Pretty bones don't scare the devil. It's, it's, it's when... It's when life comes in them. It's when the power is demonstrated in them. Hurabakashaya. Hallelujah. You, you, can, you can know everything about it, but still be dead. Still be dead. The devil knows the scripture. And he's the devil. Still be dead. Ooh, this is good. I could go for another four hours. Hey, man, I just, I'm not even halfway through my notes. Not even halfway through my notes, and I kind of feel like I as if I got to pull out a balloon and make a shape or something. Hallelujah. Look, kids, it's a, it's a dog. God wants to bring to life what he has already placed inside of you. Because if you could only know how powerful what's inside of you is. Whew. In the name of Jesus, feel the glory of the Lord. Praise God. And so, and so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, ah, like this, the prophet ends up saying, the Lord, the Lord kind of looks at him and says, e e Ezekiel, you're, you're not finished yet. You weren't just, just here to be able to call the bones together and just see the flesh come on the bones. You're not finished. And I dare say to you young people in this place, you're not even close to being finished. You haven't even started yet. You're not even close to being finished. Ezekiel, you're not finished. If these bones don't experience the power, then nothing's going to happen. And see, that's, that's why God brought me to this place today. Because there is going to be an outpouring of power in this house. There are young people that you have been bound, but the chains are about to be broken out of your life. In the name of Jesus. And so the prophet, he said, so I... So I prophesied to the wind. Whew. He began to speak to what, what is life. Because wind is life. He began to prophesy to the wind, to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west. He began to call to all the winds. And he said, breathe, blow in this valley. Hallelujah. And I feel that the wind of God is going to blow in this place tonight. Hallelujah. I, I don't only feel it. I know that the wind of God is going to blow in this place tonight. Uh, I refuse to walk out of this place without seeing somebody be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and somebody come to life uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah, because there is power in the presence of God. Uh, 
Hallelujah. The devil don't want you to tap into that power because the moment you tap into the power, all everything else will become just a nothing in your life because the power will fill every void in your soul. Oh, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. I wish somebody would grab a hold of this tonight. Uh, because somebody's going to walk out of this place uh, with an anointing on their life. Uh, that the devil is going to run from you. Jesus name. So the power began. Healing the sick. Delivering the bound. Freeing the oppressed. Comes through the power of God. It's not the lights, baby. It's not the smoke. Amen. Oh, let's get a smoke machine. Amen. Why don't you get a bubble machine? That was my, like more celestial. Hey Amen. Get something that throws confetti out. <gasps> Praise God. Hey, if we put this color of lights, then it's going to create this atmosphere. Don't fake it. Get it. Don't fake it, get it. Because it's not the lights. It's not all that. It's not all that. It's, it's none of that. It's the presence. En su presencia hay plenitud de gozo. In his presence there is glory, there is power. In his presence. When was the last time you hungered for his presence that you even had to tell your friends I'm sorry but I can't I can't hang out tonight because there's a cry in my spirit for the presence of God there's a, there's a yearning in my spirit for the presence of God I just I, I, I need his presence I need his power I need his power and if I cannot get his power then God, I don't have existence here on earth. I need his power. Spirit of the Lord. It is you that draws us, that moves us, and that calls us. Lord, let us not fall into a spirit of complacency. Mm. But let us get into a, a hungry mode. It says, I want more. I can't, I can't leave this conference without something stirring in my spirit. I, I want more of the presence of God. It's, it's not about my friends, it's about me and God. It's about me and God. Right now, every eye closed, every head bowed, in Jesus' name, I take authority over every carnal spirit, over every vain spirit, that has tried to distract you from the presence of God. I take authority over it now in Jesus name. I command it to be loosened out of your heart and out of your mind in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of oppression that has come on some young people to be broken out of this atmosphere now in the name of Jesus. 
Huh? I come after that spirit of complacency that has allowed you to settle in the level that you're at right now. God, erase it. Take it out. Break it in Jesus' name. Urabosaya. Place now, oh God, a hunger within the young people. A hunger within their soul. A hunger that cannot go any further without feeling and, and being in the presence of Almighty God. Now in Jesus' name. Urabakasanda Rabakataya. I need somebody praying right now. Rabosaya. Akarabashanda Yalabotaya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I need some hungry folk lifting up their voice right now. I need some young people that are tired of hearing about it. Uh, and you want to be able to see it. Uh, and experience it. Uh, and get into it. Uh, and see your friends be delivered. Uh, and see your family be delivered. I I need uh, some hungry young people in this place. Uh, I need some young people that are willing uh, to grow up in their spirit. Uh, to come into relationship with God. Uh, and say, Lord, I don't thirst for the world. Uh, but I thirst for your presence. Uh, I need some young people in this place. Uh, that can go beyond. Uh, beyond the limitations uh, that they have reached in their life. Uh, and they put a determination in their life and in their spirit that says I'm not leaving here until I get a breakthrough are there any young people like that in this place tonight Stand and lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hands. Now in the name of Jesus, lift up your hands all over this place. Harabakashaya, the name of Jesus, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, move, Spirit of the Lord, move, Jesus' name. I want to see in this place, I want to see some real apostolics. I want to see some real Pentecostals. I want to see, I want to see, I don't want the fakes. If you're a fake, you stay in your seat. I don't, I don't even want you up here. Hey Amen. You go ahead and go to hell. I want real kids, real young people that love God. Maybe you messed up, but you love God. And you want to make it right, and you want to get things right with God, and you want God to bring life into your soul. Maybe you just desire, I, I want more, I want more. I don't just want to be, I don't just want to be a part of the youth. I want more, I want more. I need some real young people that you're going to step away from your friends. You're going to step away from all that stuff, everybody around you. This ain't the time to be cool and act cool and all this kind of stuff. Uh-uh. You leave cool outside. Hallelujah. This is a time to be real. I want real young people that you say, I want this tonight I want it to stir in my spirit I want it to leave with me and I don't want it to die if I got some real young people even if it's just one I want you up here in this altar right now in the name of Jesus come running I want some real young people up here running Jesus name hallelujah 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 I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. 
You need to squeeze in as far as close as you can. Get as close as you can. Come on, get as close as you can. I'm going to ask everybody, stay quiet. Just close your eyes. Because first, you have to make a decision in your mind and in your heart. Even if my friends don't serve you, I will. I will serve you. Even if I never get blessed, I'll still live for you. Can you make that decision right now in your mind and in your heart? You don't have to lift up your voice. You don't have to. It, it's right now. It is, it is a commitment that you're making before God right now. Because there are young people right now that God is asking things from you. I feel somebody right now, you're, you're holding on to that which God is asking you to give up. You're holding on. Can you let go? Somebody's got to let go of their dream right now. Because your dream has become more important than God's dream for you. You got to let go. Right now, I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. This is, this is a you and God moment right now. It's just you and God. Don't worry about who's next to you. Tell the Lord, I want you. I want to live for you. I want to walk in your dimension in your spirit. Hurabashaya. Right there. There you go. There you go. There you go. You're making that decision right there. You're making that decision. And right now you're feeling something being broken in your life right now. There are addiction, hidden addictions that you have had in your life. And the Lord's saying, let it go right now. Let it go. I will break it and loosen it out of your life. Let it go right now. I take authority over every chain in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every condemnation that the enemy has been able to manipulate your mind with. I take authority over it now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I command every chain to be broken by the power of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now begin to lift up, lift up, lift up that praise, lift up that cry, lift up that voice in the presence of God. I'm about to release a word of faith in this place and when I release that word of faith uh, the spirit of the Lord uh, is going to begin to move in this house uh, if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost uh, you're about to speak in tongues right now you won't understand what you're speaking but you will enjoy what you're feeling uh, you just go ahead and let that tongue dance. Uh, when I release this word of faith, uh, you're going to open up your mouth. Uh, and you're going to begin to intercede in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're going to another level. You're about to break through right now. Uh, every limitation in the name of Jesus. Uh, now, by the authority of the word of God, 
and by the power of the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move upon these young people like you moved in the valley of dry bones. Bring life in Jesus' name. Somebody lift up that intercessory prayer. Somebody begin to speak in tongues now. I don't hear you. Go ahead. Arabo Sanda Rabaka. Iando Robosaya. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Rabo Sandaya. The dimension of the power of God is in this place right now. It's here. It's here. It's here. Rabo Saya. Somebody gotta get desperate on it now. Somebody got to shout like you never shouted. Uh, somebody got to intercede like you never interceded. Uh, somebody speak in tongues like you never spoke it before. Uh, go beyond uh, where you've gone before. Now, 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 now. Rabo Sandaya. Come on now. There's somebody holding back right now. Harabosaya, you got a scream all bottled up inside of you. I dare you to let it out. I dare you to scream in the house of the Lord because in that scream there's a breakthrough. I said, in that scream there's a breakthrough. You ought to open up your mouth right now and scream in the presence of God. Urabas, I don't hear you. Lift up your voice right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't worry about your neighbor. I, you get it, get it, get it for yourself. Get it for yourself. Quit trying to be cute. Get in the spirit. Come on now. Quit trying to be cute. Get in the spirit. Get it now. Get it now. Even if it, begin, if it begins to shake you, go ahead. Uh, but get into your Holy Ghost fit now. Get your, get it now. Now is the moment to go beyond. Go, go, go beyond in the name of Jesus. Urabakasandaya, Spirit of the Lord, let your power move in every young person in this place. Let your power move. Let your power move. Urabasanda Rabakataya. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Come on. Come on, young people. Come on. Come on, young people. Push. Push. Hiriala Bosandaya. But then he does not stop. Psalm 19 verse 1, Psalm 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He does not stop with what's in the earth. He moves to the heavens. And one of the greatest symbols he's given us in the heavens is the sun. The S-U-N explains the S-O-N. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 for our God is a consuming fire what is the Sun it's a ball of fire now watch this where I come from originally Martha's Vineyard 
they have beautiful beaches and so they have what they call sun worshippers these are people that go to the beach and lay out before the sun see to be a worshipper even the world understands it they call them sun worshippers and this is the requirement you must go out from protection and expose yourself to the sun to worship then you must expose yourself and lay down before the sun until the sun changes you you don't have to tell somebody you don't have to ask somebody if you've been in the sun the same token you can tell somebody when they've had a lot of sun you can tell them you can especially in the winter months you don't have to wonder if they stayed here in Wisconsin where'd you go because the sun has transformed their image literally their looks it transform and that's why when you're a true sun worshiper you will come out from the protective covering of the world that shields you from the love of God you will begin to peel off your armor and expose yourself to God you will lay down before God until God changes you and a true sun worshiper doesn't just lay on his back he flips over and lays on his stomach because he wants to change all the way around yeah.